so here we will be covering the majority of the areas in polity from where the potential questions can be came so we will be running in a high pace mode it is a rapid revision program so we will be just focusing on the important topics that has been consistently asked in the prelims okay and then we will be pondering on to the previous questions also okay so we can look for the importance of polity in prelims so how many questions you can pick as an average from polity i think you have all studied csat yes so the average is about 20 questions an average 20 questions is being asked in each year so the last 2022 how many questions were asked how many questions it was only about 10 only 10 questions this year was an exception but majorly about 15 to 20 questions will be asked that is for sure and in an era where the cutoff usually ranges between 80 to 90 polity will be a game changer okay so this is just to show what is the relevance of the polity okay so when we look on to the syllabus of the polity they have given this much thing not lakshmi okay so they have given indian polity governance and the constitutional scheme next about the political system panjayati raj public policy and right issues even though this much syllabus has been given only this much part is majorly focused right this part is only majorly focused we may not uh, such much delve into panjayati raj public policy right issues but all this have an intricate linkage between the constitution and these topics because all these topics are a part of current affairs also so whenever the question is being asked from any any ministry department any policies of the program of the government of india all these are linked to the governance scheme and the constitution itself so what we have to do is the major majority of the questions are being coming from constitutional part so we have to be very clear on that because in any way about 10 questions out of 15 will be much of easy type so in any way we shouldn't lose any toll from that test 10 questions because all the people who are the serious aspirants might be making it correct for the 10 questions so if you are losing out the tally from that 10 easy questions then it will be very difficult for us to clear the games okay so you have to be very clear on that part okay so we can look in the uh, past term, past years papers how many questions from the last 10 years have been asked from different parts okay so this is a systemic arrangement of the different topics okay this is the most most boring part in polity right historical background you will be covering it in modern india also in polity also in both area it will be a great headache for you is this color visible no okay so this will be the most boring part this area you should absolutely cover from the modern india because in no paper there is no question there is no paper without this historical background in modern india so this is a die hard portion which you should cover from modern india okay from the polity perspective i have taken the class so you have to be just focused on the what were the significance of decentralization of power in the proceeding charter acts council acts and government of india acts you have to be very clear on that part from the modern day perspective also okay then majority of the questions in polity is coming from government of india act 1935 so majority of the questions are directly from 1935 whether the residuary power has been given to provincial governors or the viceroy this much nuances of these each acts should be covered from this part okay but the weightage of the questions has been only one from the 10 last uh, 10 years okay and next about the major part salient features of the constitution and another center state relation where three questions has been asked so you can look that in this column we have two pages of this uh, areas and reward from here most of the questions has been from preamble and most simplest thing and the most crisp thing which we have to study is from preamble because the preamble is having only one page and majority of the questions are from preamble part how because there lies the philosophy of the constitution 
about the words like sovereignty socialism liberty fraternity all these words are it's a upsc is in romance with preamble okay so you have to be very clear on that part and about the fundamental duties rights and dpsp part is the another most significant part so these are the most rewarding areas and the major rewarding area is coming which is that this is the most rewarding part parliament about 23 questions has been asked from the past 10 years so you can skip polity you can skip any other part but if you are skipping parliament then you are out of the game okay so if we arrange in a order wise how the weightage of each of the parts come then we can arrange it first as parliament of india first you have to cover the important themes of the parliament secondly the most rewarding area is fundamental right fundamental duty and dpsp and thirdly the most important part is salient features of the constitution in salient features you will be studying preamble also okay then fourthly about the executive system especially in the union part this is the another major rewarding portion where the council of ministers president vice president all these topics are being asked so if you arrange in this matter you have to prioritize your studies in this portion okay so these are the most highly rewarding portions and another significant portion where we mostly disregard is the constitutional bodies this is also one of the most rewarding portions okay so we can just ponder on all through all through these topics where you have to put more stress on your coming studies days okay so what you will be all dealing in salient features part in salient features part which areas you should more focus okay so first thing in salient features you have to just look upon the historical basis or historical origin of the constitution your evolution or historical underpinnings you have to be just looked upon in modern the revision you will be covering this part so i am not including this part in polity okay you have to just cover up go through this government of the acts 1919 1909 and 1935 just go through these provisions and leave up there secondly the most important portion here is that schedules when i have dealt in the class we have found that in most of the pyqs no question no question paper doesn't come without mentioning of any of the schedules of the constitution so you all will be knowing which trick or which noun you have to pronounce for getting the schedules what is the shortcut to get all the schedules tiers of old pm so everyone knows that right so we have to be very clear on that tiers of old pm all letters with schedule numbers especially on the 5th and 6th schedule which states are included in the 6th schedule tribura misora okay next about the 10th schedule 10th okay what about 8th yes so these schedule parts are most rewarding in the salient features okay so the third area you have to focus is that type of government or system of governance so what you will be studying here is that what are the salient features of the constitution which form a part and parcel of indian form of governance that is the federal system of governance quasi federal system of governance and parliamentary form of governance so what are the peculiarities of a parliamentary form of government from the presidential system that you have to look and another theme is that how the indian theme of federalism is different from that of us and uk because we have an absolute admixture of the governance system in us and uk so we have to be very clear because upsc once asked uk parliament is supreme in making legislation but is the indian parliament supreme is indian parliament having supremacy over legislation no right since the british form of governance always stresses on the importance of the parliament in making legislation but here the parliament is not having any sovereignty as per the constitutionalism the parliament is circumscribed by certain limits which are put by the constitution itself so this can only be interpreted by the judiciary and the power of that judiciary is taken from usa constitution so we have to be very clear on the part of the governance system in india okay that is the another most important area where you have to took on this salient features and fourth about the the uh, form of 
Indian form of federalism where the states or the federal teams or the three tier form have to be focused. We are having three tier form of the government ranging up to the panchayat level. But we have asymmetric federalism also. What do we mean by that? Asymmetric federalism. What? We have three tier form of government. Yes? We have three tier form of government, union at the apex level, state, and the Panjait Raja third level. But in certain of the conditions or certain areas of the geography in India, this provision is not wholly applicable. In which areas? The scheduled areas. Okay. Where we will be having an asymmetric form of federalism. Right. So this form of federalism is also a unique feature of India. Where the governor of the state will be awarded with more powers to regulate autonomous district counties. So this is a part of 5th and 6th schedule. So this is also a unique feature of Indian form of federalism. And next about the positions of the constitutional bodies where the vice president is having distinct role from the USA constitution. So all these features form a part and parcel of silent features. And next about the basic preambles, basic features of the constitution itself. What is that? What is the peculiarity of our constitution with regard to USA or UK constitution? What is the peculiarity? In UK, the constitution is majorly focused on the conventional part, where the constitutional conventions has been evolved since long time. But Indian constitution has been written and in a rigid format. So the rigidity along with the flexibility, flexibility through the various hundred amendments that have been passed since the last time. So this forms a peculiarity where the rigidity is always with there, but also the flexibility is also there. This is a form of Indian form of constitution. So these are the basic elements which you have to look on this high, highly rewarding part that is silent features. Okay. The other major theme is the preamble. This is a very simplest part, but one of the most rewarding area. You have to be very clear with all the adjectives in the preamble. What are all these adjectives? Can you cite? Sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic. And then justice, fraternity, liberty, equality. This is, yes. So all these adjectives should be crystal clear. Okay. What are the exact meaning of these words should be exactly clear. And what all are the words that have been added post 42nd amendment. Okay. This should also be clear. So majority of the, uh, that philosophical part of the questions will be coming from this preamble part. Okay. That's all you have to deal here. And the highly most rewarding area is the fundamental rights, duties and DPS. Here, you have a lot of topics to cover. About article, article 12 to 35 is wholly fundamental rights. Okay. So in here, 13, you have to deal about what? 13. State is article 12. Okay. 13 is? Judicial review and what do we mean by law? These two elements are covered in Article 13. And the cluster of Article 14 to 18, you have to be very clear on the right to equality. Okay. In 19, you have been given right to freedom. And what is the difference between Article 20 and Article 22? What is the difference? What is the difference? So, this difference should be clearly noted because some of the uh, last year's question was just an evolution from Article 22 about the parole, custody, everything. So, directly the questions may not come, but you have to be very clear on this difference. Article 20 is with respect to certain of the conviction related to certain offenses. Conviction. But this is mostly relating to the arrest. So, certain rights should be govern governed or given to the people who are just being arrested. Such as, they have to be given the right to consult a lawyer. They have to produce before the magistrate within 24 hours. These all types of rights are given to the person who has been just detained. That includes the preventive detention as well as the punitive detention. That is given in Article 22. 
but article 20 is related to conviction that means once a person has been convicted for an offense here mostly the rights like retrospective action of criminal laws are prohibited where a criminal can only be punished for the law which has been existent in the time being if he is being punished for the retrospective or through the retrospective application of the criminal laws then he is being that law is being declared as unconstitutional so these kind of rights like the witness or the convict should not be they should not give any evidence against himself that is known as the self incrimination all these are prevented through article 20 so this is a right which is accrued when the time of the arrest is being happened and this is related to the conviction of certain offenses okay so next about the article 21 ups is very happy in asking questions from article 21 right to marry someone is a right which is being protected under article 21 right to sleep not in the class is also a right protected under article 21 okay that right was given in supreme court in the jandar mandar amadmi party's case right to sleep was accrued as a part of article 21 okay and right to privacy from the puttaswami judgment is also been from article 21 and in all these areas whatever the current happenings are being done through the supreme court or any legal evolution has been happening that will also form a part of fundamental rights so this is known as the right issues because the lgbtq community homosexuality everything has based on the right to life so all find its origin from right to life so if any of the question if coming from the philosophy part which right or uh, which kind of right is being included under following the articles it will be under article 14 sorry article 21 so another kind of the question can be asked from article 14 suppose i am an officer i am handling certain of the cases of you so i might give a unfair judgment arbitrary judgment so this arbitrary judgment is violation or in negation of rule of law so they might ask one pyq has been asked if i am giving an arbitrary judgment then which of the following article has been violated so which will be that article which will be that article article 14 itself because that says everyone is equal and it has a positive concept also equal protection of the laws and where the role of law is followed everyone should be equated same before the law and in that fairness of the judgment you have two elements when you are classifying certain persons two elements has to be noted one is that reasonable nexus and intelligible differentia this is a part of article 14 whenever you are doing any action that action should have an equal nexus with the what object has to be purposed i can discriminate someone okay i can discriminate someone but that discrimination should be based on an excellent classification which is reasonably and logically accepted example i am discriminating sc or sc sc or st and that discrimination is based on an excellent thought that they have been historically injustified so that reasonable nexus and the intelligible differentia a logical thought and the intention to achieve a good good one so if these two conditions are succeed then that law is valid so this is the philosophy behind article 14 okay so no one shall be discriminated but they can be discriminated on certain grounds so that is given in the article 15 and 16 itself article 14 says no one shall be treated unequally but article 15 also says we are prohibiting discrimination but what are the articles in article 14 3 5 6 saying about these are according the reservation to certain marginalized communities so this is the philosophy behind that so they might ask article 15 or 15 clause 4 is an exception of article 14 it is not an exception these are the equated methods or steps to be achieved for the higher norm of the equality so this part should be very clear and next about the our major part article 23 to 24 where the right against exploitation has been given where two in exploitation two have been given exceptions what are the two exceptions we can be exploited yes it's for sure but only two grounds constitution is prohibiting exploitation of the people but they can be exploited for two grounds 
one is for compulsory voluntary service and for military service yes so this exception should also be noted same in case of article 19 also the exceptions like sovereignty incitement to offense contempt of court these exemptions should also be noted in the articles okay and in the same part you have to be very clear on which all rights are available to citizens and foreigners so which are the rights which are only available to citizen of india 15 16 29 30 okay so these are the rights which is mostly been asked in each press series okay so you should be very clear on that part also and next about the article 25 to 28 where the rights for religion is given in 25 mostly the rights related to private persons are given from there onwards the institutions also have been gaining the rights okay next about the article 29 to 30 these are the rights without any exceptions two groups of the people are protected here what are those two cultural minorities here linguistic and religious minorities okay so next about article 31 uh, 31 the majority of the questions are asked from the right to property perspective okay that you have to be cover along with the ninth schedule because ninth schedule is gaining the right from 31b okay as per 31b the ninth schedule is functioning and next about the article 32 where the most questions have been asked from rights so what is the difference between certiorari and prohibition what is the difference certiorari prohibition what is the difference what is certiorari you all will be knowing habeas corpus right to bring the body dead or alive next about mandamus mandamus is about to to do or not to do something it is a command towards the public bodies it include the public corporations as well okay and next about the prohibition what is the prohibition the word itself says that it is being it is going to be prohibited or prevented to prevent what to prevent the excess of jurisdiction or lack of the jurisdiction by a lower tribunal or court if the case of prohibition is unsuccessful then the lawyers always plead certiorari because sometimes by the judgment of the high court or supreme court is being proceeded on the certiorari the judgment by the lower court might be passed so we have to quash that judgment in order to quash that judgment we can use certiorari certiorari means to be certified as it is being quashed so the prohibition is primarily issued if the prohibition uh, prohibition is unsuccessful then certiorari can be issued then you will be knowing quo warranto what is that quo warranto means on what authority you are being appointed here it is to remove the unnecessary person from the office who have been accumulated okay so these are the things to be noted here then article 32 or 226 which is more stronger and powerful article 20, article 32 enables us to approach the supreme court supreme court for enforcing any of the fundamental rights provided in part 3 article 20, 226 allows us to reach high court for enforcing any of the rights given part 3 as well as any other rights so thereby article 226 is more powerful than article 32 so this should be clear in the part of fundamental rights and next about the duties in fundamental duties you have to be very clear on that 10 duties okay that gandhi ji's code you know that i will take it last okay there is a gandhi ji's code bapu ji that code hai so in that code uh, we can deal we can uh, study all these fundamental duties in a orderly manner okay so you should know all these uh, fundamental duties because sometimes questions might be asked to cite some of the fundamental duties in mains also okay and next the most highly rewarding area is dpsp in dpsp you have to be very clear on the classification then that classification is not defined in constitution the dpsp is being classified into liberal neo liberal gandhian and socialistic so in that case the constitution has not defined this classification but for the sake of studying or academics we have been dealt into three parts okay so you have to be very clear on what all rights what kind of socio economic democracy is to be achieved through enforcement of dpsp and in the same way you should know 
fundamental right over DPSP, which is the most powerful thing. Which is the most powerful thing. So certain amendment which came, which said that for enforcing a DPSP, fundamental right can be amended. So DPAP, DPSP stands for a higher footage. But in the cases like Minerva Mills, the court said that fundamental rights and DPSP, they belong as a two wheels of a same chariot. They march towards achieving the goal of socio-economic democracy. So in uh, the next judgment onwards, it was stressed as fundamental rights having more prominence than DPSP. So this should also be very clear. Okay.